is the last Sunday before the Lent begins. Um, so we're still in this time of Jesus being revealed to the world and shining out and beginning his ministry. So um, this is one of our last pieces we're, we're, we're sort of ending up with uh, the Sermon on the Mount here. Um, so that's what we're working on today. Um, and it is the second Sunday, so today is second Sunday surprise day. You are all welcome to come to the fellowship hall after worship for a time of an intergenerational um, education time and then a Valentine's Day craft. Yes, you will want to do this. <laughs> it will be fun. Um, you may also notice, sitting on the ends of the pews, the annual meeting last week approved um, going ahead with a, a new boiler. So we have some envelopes for a boiler appeal. We're going to have a, a poster out to show how well we're doing. So if you find you can give a little bit toward that, uh, please put it in the special envelopes and that will go towards getting a new boiler this coming summer. So next winter will be more an important thing. Um, our little food pantry has been really, really heavily used these last couple of months. So if you can donate any um, food items, um, non-perishable food items, um, please consider that because, boy, it is, it is really important. People are using it. So as I said, um, we are about 10 days away from Ash Wednesday. Coming up soon, we're going to have a, a service at noon with imposition of ashes. And then between five and six, we're going to do something a little unusual. We're going to do ashes to go, or ashes on the go. Ashes on the go, I think, so if you find this at a So if you are out and about between five and six, you can drive up under the, the awning, and we will come out to your cars, and we will give you um, the ashes for, um, and it will be a brief, two, three minutes to do that, um, if, if that is helpful for you. So consider that too. I know we have all been just horrified by the pictures coming out of Turkey and Syria this week. Just absolute devastation on my way here today. The death toll has topped 30,000. And, and now they don't think they will find anybody anymore. So the devastation is just <clears throat> horrific. I want you to know, however, that because you are a Lutheran, we are there already. We are on the ground providing food and blankets and shelter to people. So that is through Lutheran disaster relief. If you can give to that, you have a bulletin insert to tell you more about that. But just know when you see all that suffering, you are already there helping. That's really, really important. Um, Jim, 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 wanted to make an announcement. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. So, uh, on behalf of the Presbyterian Church, you are all invited to a pre-Ash Wednesday Mardi Gras brunch next Sunday at noon uh, at our social hall. Uh, it's going to be kind of a fun time. We typically do this event in the evening, but we're just going to have it at noon. So if you're interested, there is a sign-up sheet in the back uh, in the narthex, so I hope to see, see you there. Thank you. So will you stand as you are able for the call to worship? You'll find that printed in your bullet. <laughs>
one God, who makes us new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
pray. Remember, we, we fold the hands right. and we close the eyes. And we take a deep breath to relax. Our first reading comes from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, beginning at verse 15. Moses said to the people, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before your, you life and death, blessings and curses, Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the Lord. Now, I, you know I always challenge you on the psalm. And it's 119, and today the men will read the light print. The women will respond in the bold. Men? Happy are they whose way is blameless, who follow the teaching of the Lord. Happy are they who observe your decrees and seek you with all their hearts. Who never do any wrong, but always walk in your ways. You lay down your commandments that we should fully keep them. All oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with a true heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Our second reading is found in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. Brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. The word of the Lord.
Will you stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel? It is an ouchy text. There is no doubt about it. 
Almost all of us have either said or at least thought that somebody was a fool, guilty. All of us either know someone who's divorced or are divorced ourselves. And most of us have probably admired the finer qualities of someone of the opposite sex. So in one word, we are toast. We are just toast. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh my. That's how we ended last week's reading, this part of the Sermon on the Mount. So is this good news? Sure doesn't sound like it. So what are our options here? Well, you know, we could either work really, really hard at being good and righteous and end up just being self-righteous and insufferable. Or we just throw up our hands in frustration, give it up, and say, we'll just do whatever we want. Neither of those options are awesome, just saying. But if we step back a minute, take a breath, look at the bigger picture, what we see is that God cares about our relationships with each other. God cares how we act to one another. Now, not one of us is going to get a passing grade in that class, but that doesn't mean we don't have to work at it. We are still expected to do our best. Jesus is trying to help us see that just doing something because we're following the rules and want to get to heaven that's not enough. That's not enough. That's what the scribes and Pharisees were trying to do. See, I can do everything right. I'm a good person. Motivation is important here. We could call that following the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. So the only way to exceed their interpretation would be to worry more about the spirit and not the letter. Martin Luther was trying to get at this too when he wrote the meanings for the Ten Commandments in the Small Catechism, which I know some of you memorized back in the day, right? Some of you might even remember some of it. For every one of those commandments, just in case you don't remember, let me just review a little bit. For every one of the Ten Commandments, Martin Luther had both something we should not do and something we should do. In other words, it's not about just don't murder somebody, don't steal, don't commit adultery. It's the opposite too. It's about how we live well together, how we care for each other, even those we aren't related to, even those we don't know, even strangers. Now, you may or may not know this, but our hymnal has the whole small catechism in it. So I'm going to actually have you open it. Way to the end, to page 1160, 1160. Way at the end. I'll just sit and hum a minute while you get there. Small catechism. See, it's all there. I bet you there are some of you here that didn't even know that was there. So I want you to look, for instance, at the seventh commandment. Now, you shall not steal. I think probably most of us might feel pretty confident in that. I'm hoping nobody robbed a bank this week. If so, Come and see me later. Um, but, 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 look at the way Luther explains it. We are to fear and love God. You probably remember that from when you memorized. We are to fear and love God so that we neither take our neighbor's money or property, 
nor acquire them by using shoddy merchandise or crooked deals, but instead help them to improve and protect their property and income. Hmm. Improve and protect their property and income. Well, I don't know about how you're doing on that count, but I'm not sure I do very well at that. I'm really good at the not robbing a bank thing. I think I've got that one down. But helping people improve and protect their income, oof, that's asking a lot. Luther in the small catechism is doing something similar to what Jesus was doing in the Sermon on the Mount. Both of them are blowing open our narrow idea of what it means to be faithful, what it means to be righteous, what it means to do good. It's not only about avoiding bad things, it's also about caring for each other. Commandment number five, not killing somebody is great. Mostly I think I've got that one down, but there are days of course. Um, but then God's concern goes further to help and support our neighbor in all of life's needs. Oof, that's a lot. That's a lot. Jesus even goes so far to say, I don't want you to go to church. I don't want you to come and worship God if you still got issues with other people. Go and resolve those first before you come here. It's more important that we make peace with each other than come to church. Wow. Worship is what you do after, after you've squared things with your neighbor. But that's not what's easiest, is it? That's not what we usually do. We take care of Jesus' commandment to love God. Coming to church, loving God. Got that one down, Jesus. But then that second part about loving neighbor? Ooh. It's easier to go to church and love God than it is to love my neighbor sometimes. And how do we love our neighbor? Jesus talked a lot about that because it's hard. It's really hard. Because there is so much need in the world. There's a song that Larry Olson wrote. He's part of Dakota Road Music, talking about care of neighbor that kind of, at least to me, helps me kind of understand. It says, when there's bread for all people, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. When there's bread for all people, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul will rest. And then it goes on. When we all have safe shelter, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul, when we all have safe shelter, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul will rest. When there's peace on this planet, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. When there's peace on this planet, then my soul will rest. Oh, my soul will rest. Our souls rest, finally, when we try to make sure that everybody has enough to eat, everybody has a safe place to live, everybody can live in peace then our souls can rest. So I think part of this is always an unease to say, 
our souls are still telling us there is more to do. Not because we're trying to earn a place in heaven, but because we want to take care of each other. Again, our motivation is important. It's not about me. It's about forgetting ourselves, losing ourselves in the care of each other. Then our souls rest. That's the work that God has given us to do. That's the kingdom work that God has for us. Again, not to earn God's love. God already loves us. We don't do it to get something. We do it because we've already gotten it, because we already know that we are loved and cared for, and that God will take care of us in life and after death. And so in that freedom, God asks us to love our neighbors in those physical ways, in food and shelter and peace. It is a lifetime's work, and it is work that is blessed. We sing together number 612, Healer of Our Every Hill.
time of prayer, I invite you to breathe in God's spirit of peace as we rest in God's loving hands. Call together to follow Jesus, we pray, for the church, the world, and all in need. Inspire your church that it may be a sign of life throughout the world. From the exploration of faith with children and new believers to missionaries and bishops, shape lives of faithfulness so that all find abundant life in your ways. Merciful God, nourish your creation. Accompany all who plant and water. Bless the work of farmers. Provide for subsistence farmers facing drought and climate change. Guide the work of agricultural scientists towards sustainable ways to feed the world. Merciful God, give growth where there seems to be no hope for life. In nations and regions where reconciliation seems impossible, especially we pray for the people of Ukraine, Empower peacemakers with your spirit. Where death holds sway through violence, disease, or hunger, equip relief workers to bring hope. We pray especially today for all the victims of the massive earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Comfort those who are in need of your healing. Especially, we pray for Johnny and for Jim, for Gary and Sharon, Tony and Tom and Kathy and all those on our prayer list and those we name now, aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nurture all in me. Bring healing to all who experience trauma caused by systems of injustice and destructive relationships. Give courage to those struggling to repent, those seeking reconciliation. Sustain all who work for restoration. Merciful God, encourage this congregation. Call us to a common purpose. Keep us from quarreling. Turn our hearts toward you and guide our leaders so that our choices may be life-giving for all. Merciful God, we bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. We come to a time of offerings. As always, thank you for your faithfulness in giving to the mission and ministry of Christ through Zion Lutheran. You may put um, envelopes and plates at the back, or you may contribute online. Thank you for your faithfulness. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power. And shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, you have shown forth to all the nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed in your beloved Son. In the miracle of water turned to wine, you revealed your glory. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
because we prayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Number 542, Living Bread of Heaven. 